Hi, everyone, and welcome to a special episode of the Horn Call podcast. My name is James Bolden, Publications Editor for the International Horn Society and your host. Today, we'll be talking to the hosts of the Northeast Horn Workshop to be held March 25th through the 28th, uh, hosted by West Virginia University. Uh, our hosts today for the Northeast Horn Workshop are Jonas Toms and Albert Hood. Jonas is the Assistant Professor of Horn at West Virginia University, and Albert Hood is principal horn in the West Virginia Symphony Orchestra and uh, a DMA student at West Virginia University. We had a really great conversation today talking about the planning process of converting what was meant to be a uh, an in-person workshop to a virtual one. Um, I will say that uh, I don't think you're going to find a more impressive and uh, interesting list of uh, guest artists, contributing artists, and and various other workshop activities uh, at the Northeast Horn Workshop. Uh, Now, that being said, there are several other virtual workshops this particular season. Uh, March 12th through 14th, the Southeast Horn Workshop, hosted by Austin Peay State University, and April 23rd, 23rd through the 25th, the Virtual Northwest Horn Symposium hosted by the Seattle Symphony Horns. Um, I hope that you will take the time and uh, uh, visit at least one of these virtual workshops. There are lots of great registration options as well as some fantastic guest artists, presentations, and uh, contributing artists. Now, All of these things uh, will hopefully lead up to the International Horn Symposium uh, this summer. IHS 53 is also going to be a virtual workshop, so uh, hopefully these uh, uh, regional workshops will whet your appetite for the International Horn Symposium this summer. I have actually uh, a good problem as far as this podcast goes. I've got more episodes recorded than I've been uh, able to make the time to edit, so I'm hoping to get caught up on that here in the next several weeks and uh, keep checking uh, wherever you get your podcasts to find the latest updates on the Horn Call podcast. Uh, We'll resume uh, with the 15th of this month with a new regular episode, but uh, since this one was particularly time sensitive since the Northeast Horn Workshop is happening uh, here in just a couple of weeks, I wanted to make sure and get this episode out there. Uh, I hope that you enjoy this interview with Jonas Toms and Albert Hood, and uh, in closing, I'll just say that if you're enjoying the Horn Call podcast, be sure to go over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a review. We'd love to hear from you. My guests today are Jonas Toms and Albert Hood from West Virginia, and they're going to talk to us a little bit about the Northeast Horn Workshop. Thanks for being here, guys. Thanks, Thanks for having us, us, James. So, obviously, COVID has put like a huge damper on all kinds of in-person events, and not to not to belabor that because I'm sure you're sick of hearing about it, just like I am. But if you wouldn't mind talking a little bit about what the transition was like from going from this being like it was going to be an in-person workshop, I assume, right? Yes. And then, and then the decision was made at some point to go to a virtual one. So if you could maybe talk a little bit about what that process was like and maybe some of the uh, adaptations you had to make to, to pull this off. Yeah, uh, I would say probably for a year we were talking about this, you know, maybe just brainstorming. Uh-huh. Uh, well, we were anticipating it being in person. Um, and so, you know, we had ideas but we hadn't started the nitty gritty details of work. And, uh-huh. and then of course COVID happens and initially what we thought it was two weeks and then we flattened the curve and then it was a little bit longer and a little bit longer. And then it started to look like, okay, the school year is going to start with masks and distanced and maybe we'll be online. Maybe we'll be in person, you know, who knows back in the fall. And um, around that time we sort of just made the decision that, we can't really prepare for in-person, so we've got to go to online, right? And so what does that even look like? Exactly. Um, And how do we try and come up with something that's effective in um, an online format um, and and, and do all of that? And, you know, we realized that we wouldn't be allowed to travel anywhere, so no one else is going to be able to travel here, um, at least for our schools. And, And so it was, all right, how do we do this? What do we do? Who do we get? And and then, you know, in a, in a normal workshop, 
you might have two or three featured guest artists and they're there for the weekend. Mm -hmm. And so are the students and so are the contributing artists. And so is like everybody. I mean, like, you know, they're pretty much free, but now if we did a typical three day workshop week, uh, weekend starting at Friday morning at 8 AM, well, all our remote people are going to be in school for most of the day, right? So, right. so that's why we have a Thursday night schedule, and, and then a Friday afternoon to Friday night, and Saturday and Sunday, and and so we had to adjust the schedule. We had to adjust, um, you know, thinking that we couldn't rely on just two or three big guests to do everything. Um, it was kind of like the along the lines of, you know, many hands make light work, mm -hmm. um, and how do we get the same quantity of, of, of really important stuff happening, but, mm -hmm. um, spread it out across numerous people because there's just so many unknowns, right. As we've all figured out, like, oh, absolutely. um, <laughs> it's hard enough to plan for, you know, whatever you're doing next month, let alone what people with international careers are doing potentially in March, you know, when it's, when it's August and, and, and we're brainstorming, you know? Right. Yeah. Well, I got to say, you know, looking at this list of guest artists, this could be like an international symposium. I mean, these are some really, really amazing guest artists. How, how did you line all these folks up? Well, some of it, I think, was once we unrestricted ourselves from having to have everybody come here, it was like, well, you might as well just ask anybody we can think of that, Yeah. you know, um, and why not just kind of shoot for the shoot for the moon? Um, now, a lot of these people we do already have relationships with, so sure. it was easier for us to approach them and be like, hey, just be a part of this thing we're doing. Right. Yeah. And, and I was going to ask you. Um, so there'll be the typical kinds of things, master classes, competitions. Looks like there'll be some exhibits and that sort of thing. Is there anything in particular that you feel like, um, you know, the, the average workshop attendee might not know about through this virtual format that you would draw their particular attention to to hey make sure you do this um even if you don't do any of the other stuff for, for the workshop well i mean the thing is we tried to have all of the, the normal things that you mentioned right right but but it's also like the the big challenge in an online format is how do we be social how do we get that camaraderie? You know, the big part about these horn workshops for, for those of us who have gone to a lot of them is, you I mean, you got to finally get to sit down and have a cup of coffee or, or something with somebody you have only see at horn workshops, right? Or, right. Um, you know, the, the making the connections, making the friends, all that kind of stuff. And, and so built into this, we're, we're trying to be, find ways to be, have, have our guests be more accessible. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's some live podcasts that are happening as part of the workshop. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, this podcast is doing one. Pathways podcast is doing one. Music on the Rocks is doing one. And it's like trying to find some of the human aspects of the mm -hmm. horn workshop and putting them in. Um, trying to have you know, a lot of guest artists that hopefully in their presentations and their master classes are available, like are, are able to take questions and, and allow for interactions that way. Mm -hmm. Um, so, the, you know, I guess my, my biggest encouragement to our participants is, um, to not only observe, but it should try and engage, um, as is possible. Um, because it, like you said, it's, a, it's a really great collection of people and, where else will you get to find 15 internationally known guest artists that you can maybe ask a question of or at least hear talk about things that they find important in the span of a couple of days? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's awesome. Um, I was noticing the registration uh, kind of hierarchy is, is a little bit different than one might get at like a traditional face-to-face -face workshop. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because I think that's like a major selling point for the workshop. Yeah, I would say one of our goals was accessibility. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in this year where people have lost income, um, and they've been isolated, there's been just a lot of personal challenges um, that we've all had to all had to deal with, right? Um, one of the things that we wanted to make sure happened in this workshop was that anybody that wanted to attend could attend. Um, and, and so there's a free option, there's a pay what you can option, and then there's a full price registration. Um, and you know, so far we've had a, a really good 
turnout of registrations. And um, we've had a lot of people register for free, which is awesome. But we've had a lot of people that have paid a little bit, a lot of people that have paid full registration. Um, and so we're sort of relying on the generosity of those that are able right now um, to help us provide this opportunity for other people. Um, and one more note on that is is there's been generosity that has helped us make that possible, right? If, if this was solely on ticket sales, it would be really difficult. But mm -hmm. Western University has has provided us with some grants for an academic conference, for community engagement. The International Horn Society um, has, has helped us with the Regional Workshop Grant. And so those little things make it so that you know, uh, that we don't lose sleep at night over the fact that, that someone has to pay the bills at the end of this, right? We're, we're, luckily, there's some insulation and support thanks to the generosity of others. And, and I think that's a testament to our time now is that, um, you know, those that can have been very generous um, to make sure that those that, that are, maybe wouldn't have the experience otherwise, are able to have it. Um, sure. That that was really important to us from, you know, day one of this workshop. No, that's fantastic. Planning. Now, not if I get too far into the weeds, feel free to pull me out. But so like you guys are the co-hosts, right? And if you could talk a little bit about like what your roles have been in kind of prepping a workshop. I mean, I know this is like there's a mountain of work and a million different tasks. So do you guys, how do you divvy up the workload as far as preparing for this workshop? Uh, sure. I mean, uh, Jonas has been handling a lot of the uh, back end things, the organizational um, stuff with the budget and coordinating with the university since he works there. Uh -huh. um, I've been putting together competitions and coordinating with a few of the guest artists and um, all of our judges and all of those things too. So I think Jonas is doing the bulk of the heavy lifting um, as the host. I am I am the co-host, so I'm <laughs> doing whatever Jonas needs me to do to make things easier for him. <laughs> Spoken like a doctoral student, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, if I could say, like, when it comes to figuring out what we would do when, mm -hmm. um, you know, when it was when it was when came time to, to discuss featured artists, like, we have some similar connections. Uh, we both studied with Randy Gardner. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, other than that, you know, like, Albert kind of picked – uh, a handful of, of featured artists that he wanted to approach and, and I picked a handful and and we just kind of tried to utilize you know what our differences were and our strengths um, and and some regular meetings about what to do about this how to create this how do we how do we do work you know competitions so um, I, Albert's running the competitions and and mm -hmm. and and I'm running other things but I would say most of those areas have been at least in some part, We've mm -hmm. had collaborative conversations about what do we do about this? How do we make this work? Um, and I think that's been kind of the, the crazy part of, of doing a now online workshop is there were times where I felt like we would come up with ideas of how we were going to do something. And then we had to learn how to do that thing. You know, right. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. like we knew it was like, okay, let's figure out how sure. you do, you know, a hundred zoom, you know, meetings and all right. that kind of stuff. Right. Right. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely been very collaborative. I mean, we sit and have very long Facebook Messenger conversations, <laughs> bouncing ideas back and forth. And how are we going to handle this? What do we do with, you know, this problem that's come up that, you mm -hmm. know, you wouldn't have had otherwise um, if we right. were just bringing people here? And, and how do we sort those things out? A lot of research mm -hmm. into all the technical things. And, and I think ended up a lot of the things ended up being simpler than that we thought they would be um, and that we were anticipating. So that's been actually pretty nice. Well, that's great. It, well, that was going to be my next question. What, what would you say have been maybe some pleasant surprises about this virtual format or, or any, any advantages that you noticed uh, going into this as opposed to maybe dealing with like a face-to-face -face workshop? Well, I think <laughs> the biggest advantage is just being able to invite anybody that we wanted mm -hmm. to come in to be yeah. a featured artist. No and plane tickets. Right. Yeah, there's, there's no plane tickets, but I mean, you know, how how often are you going to be able to like get American Horn Quartet to like come be a part of a thing? Because they're just they're all over the place, right? Um, you know, and we've got people from major orchestras and major educators and 
you know, we got a lot of really great people to come in to do this who there's no way we would have gotten even half of those people to come here mm -hmm. to do that on everybody's busy, normal schedules in March. Right. Yeah. Usually for a regional, it's like two or three at most. But this yeah. is this is an amazing group you've got together here. Yeah. Yeah, and, and for them, it's easier, right? Because some of them, it's like, okay, I've got one thing on Friday and one thing on Sunday, mm -hmm. and and they don't they can still do their week of work, you know, if their orchestras are playing. The other kind of silly things that we found that are a lot easier is if we were doing this in person, we'd have, what, four or five classrooms available to us to have presentations right. and master classes, et cetera. And now it's like, well, what if that one goes late? Who cares? It goes late. You know, the Zoom link will end at some point and there's there's not as many fa uh, uh, physical concerns sure. um, that that in some cases make it a lot easier because it's like that'll end when it ends, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, those things have all been been nice. Plus, I, I found out personally about these resources that we have at the university that like teach you how to do a lot of these online digital things like that's someone's job to to help with that kind of stuff and um i never would have probably explored that ever um mm -hmm. before and so I, I guess i learned more about some of the things we have to offer but right. um so no, that's, that's cool. no it makes me it makes me think and i've been reading a lot about this like in the chronicle of higher ed they're talking about well what's the new normal gonna look like and pretty much this this idea of you know, there's no way we're probably going to go back to all in person ever, even if, you know, COVID disappears tomorrow, because there's going to be some some distinct advantages to sort of being able to do these kinds of things without being confined to a physical space. I'm wondering if, you know, future workshops are, you know, of course, they'll be in person and have live performances like we all love. But I wonder if there will be certain aspects where they realize, hey, we could do this virtually and it might actually work better than trying to get a room or trying to figure out, you know, logistics of spaces and that sort of thing. Yeah, or even the idea of having a, a, a virtual package that someone could register for that maybe costs less than an in-person one, but is as access mm -hmm. to certain events, you know, that um, because, you know, we found that it this is the Northeast workshop, but if you look at the list of people that have uh, have applied to present or have applied mm -hmm. to compete, um, they come from other areas, uh, right. and and the virtual like gives us a far few barriers to be able to reach mm -hmm. people and connect with people. Um, and again, in, in I'd say the biggest problem of the last year for a lot of us is the ability to reach people and connect with people in a personal, right. meaningful way. Um, so, you know, why, why not keep that a big part of our future if possible, even if it's, you know, in tandem with a normal in-person event. Mm -hmm. What, what is the sort of promotional and advertising process been like with, with something like this? Well, you know, we, we use social media to an extent, we use email to an extent. I mean, mm -hmm. a word of mouth, um, we hope that, you know, every time one of our featured artists shares that they're presenting there, it's it's a all of a sudden there's like a dozen people that register that day. You know, <laughs> right. um, and you know it's it's funny because like you really need uh, I find you really need the help of other people uh, to it. make to make that possible to make the awareness out there. You know, um, me spamming everybody's email inbox <laughs> or or messaging stuff on on facebook message boards you know all day long is is i think there's a uh point of diminishing returns right on that you really need like the um the community itself to be behind it um and get excited about it and and we're hoping that as we go over the next month that more and more people as we get close to it will be excited about it that will mm -hmm. you know help in this you know communal effort to to have an event. Yeah, I think when we had talked briefly uh, back last semester, we, you talked about getting the community involved in, in this kind of a, uh, in the workshop. Uh, what's that, what's that been like? Have you had pretty good response to that? Yeah. Um, it's, it's funny, you know, cause everything moves, I think slower than you think it should um, mm -hmm. when you're trying to plan an event, right? It's like planning a recital and, and having a bunch of collaborators on it. It's your number one priority, but it's like, their 47th priority right yeah. and so it's like oh i'm gonna do this amazing thing and 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 it's great to have the help but everything just takes a little bit longer than you want so i think being patient 
with I'm going to put this out there and see what <laughs> happens is it's just part of the game. It's part of the process, right? To oh, yeah. to make make an event like this work. I, I'd say uh, for for the vast majority of of our interactions, and, and I don't want to speak for Albert, but uh, the vast majority of have been people are excited that so and so is going to be there, or so and so is going to be there, or you know uh, the opportunity to you know, present, present or perform or, you know, for those people that are in tenure track positions, the mm -hmm. opportunity to engage in creative and research activity um, is something that we all have lost largely over the last year, right? I mean, we can't necessarily go out and perform or present mm -hmm. recitals or present master classes or do all these things. And um, so, you know, I'd say largely, for the most part, everyone's been encouraging um through this process uh and it's 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 nice it's nice to see the horn community kind of you know hungry for opportunities mm -hmm. yeah and you know albert like what a, what an amazing thing to be able to put on like your resume and job applications right to have been involved in something like this at a time like this it's you know just helping plan a workshop by itself is a huge thing, but then having to, you know, learn all of this technology, if you didn't already know it and, and interfacing with all these different groups of people and putting it all together, that's a really big achievement. So, yeah, it's been great. I mean, to be involved, I, I was really appreciative um, when Jonah suggested that um, I co-host um, as, as part of the music scene uh, here in West Virginia, since I, I play with the, the symphony mm -hmm. down in Charleston and all that, we wanted to present you know, kind of a statewide, you know, joint effort of what music in West Virginia mm -hmm. um, is all about. And yeah, and you're right. I mean, having this on the resume is good and all of those bullet points are all good to <laughs> having some experience for, you know, later. Um, if I host my own workshop at some point, that's, that's always good too. Um, and to echo Jonas, I mean, everybody's been really excited. I was surprised at how willing everybody mm. just about I approached was, um, how willing they were to be a part of things um, in the workshop um, for adjudicating and doing all of those things. I mean, we hardly had anybody who said, I, I really just don't have time for that. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody was willing to make some time. You know, some people have extra time in their schedules right now, unfortunately, but, yeah. Most you know, at the same time, free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, at the same time sitting and listening to, you know, a couple dozen um, audition tapes, takes a while and you know not everybody's going to have time with family and everything else so um, it's been great I, i've been really appreciative of everybody who's put some time into making this happen that's awesome the, are the the competitions are going to be pre-recorded for the most part will there what will be the the live stream versus pre-recorded balance um i'd say probably about 50 50 okay. um like things like the presentations are all live so mm -hmm. actually that's that's probably more than 50 50 mm -hmm. um uh, and then the the master class is live at least one well one of the featured artist ones i believe is going to be live mm -hmm. um, but everything else is pretty much you know per, uh, performance wise uh is pretty much pre-recorded mm -hmm. and uh you know that was more for logistics than anything else, right? If if we were trying to do a, a recital with, you know, college professors and a contributing artist recital from five or six different places, and trusting oh that their internet connections yeah. would work in the moment, um, yeah, yeah, that would you know. keep you up at night. What? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. Like the most important thing is that we we present a functional workshop, right? One that, that can run well <laughs> and easily and, and um, you know, to, to do the work and have the results. So um, probably, you know, 60, 40 actually live to, mm -hmm. to pre-recorded. Um, but we're trying to make it as close to that feeling of live, even the pre-recorded stuff as possible. Um, mm -hmm. You know, these recordings won't just be up forever um right. and and uh there's times where they're released and and um it's you know they're quote unquote live streamed um you know for that same kind of thing you want this kind of in the moment mm -hmm. um appointment viewing kind of stuff right right making it an event instead of just mm -hmm. on demand no I, yeah. I i agree with that completely and that that that's something that i think is going to contribute to the success of this workshop. I'm thinking of yours. I'm thinking of the Southeast one. Those are kind of going to be the big ones leading up to the IHS one, IHS one this summer because they're all virtual workshops. So I, I hope that that enthusiasm builds um, for this particular format. It's um, 
you know, I think it's a challenge for some folks just trying to get them over that hump of it's still the same stuff. You can still listen to great horn playing. You can watch great um, educational material. You can still, to some extent, you know, you can't really go into a virtual room and pick up a horn, but there'll be exhibits and, you know, all of the kinds of things that we, that we love about workshops. And you can do it all in your pajamas. Exactly. <laughs> With a giant cup of coffee. If you need it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And, you know, tune in and tune out as you need to, right? I mean, mm-hmm. um, some of these days are pretty dense uh, and and they're not designed that we're going to expect everybody to sit there for eight hours straight and have their eyes bloodshot by the end of it, right? <laughs> it's it's like find the things that you want, go to them, you know, uh, have them on while you're doing something else or pay close attention to them. I mean, there's, there's so much content jammed into three and a half days, um, but... Uh, you know, it's kind of designed like, well, we don't need a lunch break. You know, you can eat your lunch while you watch sure. that event, right? right. Um, and and do those kinds of things. So it's just a, a bunch of different new challenges that we've had to right. just things you wouldn't have thought about right a year ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, I gotta ask, how are you guys holding up? Are you are you finding time to, you know, decompress a little bit and get sleep and you know balance all those other things that we're that we're supposed to do? Uh, I'm fine. I, I'm mostly busy with. Uh, <laughs> I'm mostly busy with like doing recital prep because I've got sure. I've got two recitals left to do this semester plus the recordings for the okay. workshop that I'm doing and starting my research and I don't know. I got a, I got a lot of I got four kids and a wife and so <laughs> all this stuff to do. You're a busy so, guy. Yeah. yeah, you know, like the workshop. I mean, it's been. It's been getting busier now that we've picked up the competition adjudication has started um, this week. So for the last like three weeks or so, we didn't have a whole lot of stuff going on. It wasn't too crazy, but now we're mm-hmm. now we're ramping up. So I don't know about Jonas. I don't know how much he sleeps normally anyway. So yeah, right. I. I've, I've learned my lesson to not like complain about how busy I am, I am around Albert. Cause like at the beginning of the pandemic, we were talking and, and he asked how I was doing and I was like, Oh man, I can't find anything good to watch on TV. And that was like my biggest complaint. And then I asked Albert who he was doing. He's like, well, we've got, we're homeschooling the kids and all. And it was just like all these things. And I was like, huh, I, I don't think I can complain. So, you know, there's, there's different levels of, of busy, but, you know, I, th- I think we both have found ways to kind of compartmentalize life and, and you work now and, and then you take a break and, and you're done with work, you know? Um, so there'll be some busy times. I'm sure March will be pretty crazy. You know, we've got uh, 11 performances that we've got to edit into actual recitals, right. Okay. And, and, and put into things and, you know, create program booklets and, you know, do right. contracts and and <laughs> and and make sure that everyone. You know, we've got. I think I last count there were forty six contributing artists. Wow. And we've got the sixteen featured artists. So, um, you know, we're gonna have to make sure sixty people understand all of the little things that they have to do um, right. to for their part of of the workshop. And I don't and know. Turn you know, everything in on time. Yeah, so, right. So yeah. if you're listening out there, turn your materials <laughs> yeah. in on time. <laughs> good, good luck to you with that. But, right. I mean, I, no, horn players are pretty responsible people. I think yeah. by and large, you're going to get get everything on time. Maybe no, right. Sure d- maybe right down to the wire. But <laughs> I think they'll yeah. get it on time. <laughs> but you know, I mean, like pretty much everybody that we're dealing that we're working with for, for this workshop is a is a professional, and sure. um, and and I think. The, the excitement that they've shown about the opportunity to do stuff on a on a on a regional level at the very least, if not larger. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, people have been super quick to reply for, like I said, for help, but for when we need information and all that. So I, I should say this knock on wood, but like I would have thought I would be more stressed right now than I currently am. <laughs> but maybe we should talk again on march 24th uh there's time there's time. yeah there's, there's plenty of time I, i'm jinxing myself i don't know why i'm saying these things out loud but well no that's that's really cool well i was gonna i mean this certainly has the flavor of of an international workshop i mean it, it certainly seems much bigger and much more encompassing than than a typical you know in-person regional so i i think that's a credit to both of you um i was gonna ask i actually I had two more things i was gonna ask about if you have time today mm-hmm. um yeah. So are you guys doing all the video and audio editing yourself? Or are you able to kind of uh, get some help from the university and other folks? Or are you shouldering all of that stuff? 
Um, all in house, uh, all, all, all uh, with us basically. Um, oh my just, god! Just putting this together <laughs> and and hoping. I mean, you know, so we set deadlines that will hopefully mm-hmm. allow that to happen. And uh, yeah, we'll be fine. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it'll be a quantity of work, but like with every workshop, right, leading up to anything, I've, I've hosted individual horn days and I co-hosted another Northeast a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Like there are certain things that you just cannot do until the week before two days before the day of all that kind of stuff. And, um, you kind of, when you sign up to do one of these things, you sort of signing up that the few weeks before then are going to be chaos. Right. I mean, um, and, uh, I, I, we've got students giving recitals and things like that and recital hearings and, you know, they've known since last semester that, you know, the week leading up to the workshop, uh, were, there's just not going to be a whole lot of time to, do extra things, right? Like we're right. just, you know, all hands on deck basically to, to make sure we're running smoothly. No, that's, that's cool. Well, and I mean, just the sheer experience of being able to, to work with all of that software and having that experience of doing some audio and video editing, I think that's, those are skills that, you know, I didn't, I never took a class like that as an undergrad or as a grad student, but man, I wish I had been forced to, because especially now that's, that's a large part of our currency is just being able to make a decent recording and, you know, not have the lighting look terrible when you shoot video and all of those things that we just hadn't thought about up until now. Yeah. Everybody's becoming a producer. I just did a, uh, I just did a recital on Sunday for an orchestra that I play with that we Uh had to live stream from our living room and it was like, okay, the mics we have don't work. We got to get a different (laughs) mic and like, we don't really have enough lights in here, but we're going to have to just make this work. And like, how do we set up the camera? Yeah. I mean, you're learning how to do all kinds of crazy new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, those are skills that are transferable that you can take with you long after this. So I think that's, that's really awesome. Yeah. And I think we, we just have had the mindset of we're going to have to be flexible. Like we can't assume things should be a certain way or we'll end up being a certain way. And I, honestly, I think as performing musicians, you sort of learn that over time, right? Like if you're imagining that an audition will go exactly one way, yeah. um, you will learn that those expectations need to be altered um, after your first audition, right? Um, and so you just kind of, I think we as musicians are more more capable of rolling with the punches as it as it is like and oh okay there's a problem over here <laughs> let's put that fire out you yeah. know quickly um, and as painlessly as possible right but, yeah uh, one of, one of my administrators here at the school calls it whack a mole you're, <laughs> yeah you're basically yeah. like there's that thing yeah there's that thing one more thing so right and it's a, it's a good yeah. image. <laughs> I think sometimes too, it's been like with the things that we have to do to get prepared for this is it's like, where do we start? doesn't matter. Let's just get something done, mm-hmm. get this done. And then we'll get that done. And then, then we'll figure out new problems that we didn't know yet, you know? Um, but yeah, exactly. It's that kind of, yeah. well, it, it seems like the workshop is in really good hands and I wish you guys the best of luck. I'm looking forward to my live Q and a with the American horn quartet. I think that's, that's going to be really fun. Awesome. Oh, I, and then I guess to kind of wrap things up, I this is something that you're kind of launching with the Northeast Horn Workshop, but uh, it's something that's going to carry on into the future is this horn teaching project. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so this actually spawned out of, um, you know, our original idea before we were going online was that we would be looking for ways to, um, you know, especially help with horn education uh, in, in our community in the state of West Virginia, but beyond. And, um, uh, you know, there are, there are certain areas, uh, in throughout this country, right. Uh, and everywhere throughout the world where, um, there's not always access to, um, to teaching that is, you know, of a high quality on the horn. Right. And, and that's from a very practical point of view. You know, if, if you're a, a, a band director in a rural area and the last time you took horn methods was your sophomore year of college and you've been around for 20 years, it would be understandable that there's just less expertise than you might have on your own personal instrument or, or even the instruments that are more often played right at Mm -hmm. at the middle school or high school level. So this horn teaching project was designed with the idea that, you know, we would try and have a, a collection of information, a quantity of information that touches on various, um, 
technical uh, or or just components of horn playing, put in kind of short five minute or so videos Mm -hmm. um, that if someone has a question on, gosh, where do I, how do I have my beginning students sit? Mm -hmm. Then they can access that, right? Or where does the right hand really go? Because I mean, anybody that's started a kid or dealt or started or taught a private horn lesson to a fifth, sixth grader, you know, it's sometimes it's, uh, they're told, many and various things right um and so some of them correct some of them not yeah yeah, right i mean like and and you know again these things are understandable to how that may happen but Mm -hmm. the hope is that we can create access to resources that make it easier especially if you don't have access to people that are experts and on the instrument to get really good advice um and and to make it kind of a one-stop shop so that so you say, okay, I've got a question on tone quality. I've got a question on beginning etude books. I've got a question on, you know, stopped horn or like, you know, playing technical passages or like building range, high range. I mean, whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that there's something there that you can then access and it may not solve every problem, but it gets you started in the right mm-hmm. direction of how to help someone there. Or if you're a student, how to, you know, lead you to a resource that will provide more information and better information. And, you know, we're, we're in a a virtual world now. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we talked about earlier about how do things, you know, maybe these, we won't go back to normal, normal. I mean, one of the things that probably won't go back to normal is there'll be a, there'll be a lot more virtual teaching. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and so hopefully, you know, through things like this, there may be ability to, create a connection between someone in a, in a, a rural community and uh, someone or someone, someone who just doesn't have access to then gain access to people that have expertise and yeah. like how, how easy is it to have a zoom call? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, or whatever, you know, whatever yeah. medium. So will this be um, like a database of pre-recorded content, but then they could also maybe set up like a one-on-one um, it, it'll, it'll primarily serve as that database, um, okay. of, of here is stuff, you know, okay. on, on various topics. And, um, you know, as far as connecting people with, with one another that I don't, I don't see that as a big part of the mission, mm-hmm. um, as more so if, of, if you find somebody you like, you know, it's sure. easy enough to figure out how to, how to reach out to them. But, um, we're, we look at it as more of just content building, mm-hmm. um, and, and, it's not necessarily even content creation in some cases. A lot of times it's some of these things already exist, Mm -hmm. but it's just a way to help draw traffic to them, um, help connect people to be able to find those kinds of things. Um, as opposed to, you know, just simply content that we own in this horn teaching project. That's, it's not about that. It's about, Mm -hmm. you know, finding content and sharing it and connecting people and, um, hopefully turning it into a resource that's easy to navigate, um, you know, and then, you know, but with any teacher, you hope that your student kind of goes down this snowball effect of, oh, that was interesting. How do I find something else that exactly. will also help, right? I mean, so there's a hope, you know, that those things will happen. I mean, it's it's in, in its infant stages. We're not going to release anything until probably right right at the workshop okay um uh you know so that we have a quantity of of material um that that people can draw from but um it's an exciting opportunity for us to just hopefully help um and and provide again a resource no that's awesome i'm looking forward to that and i think the fact that it's curated by a by knowledgeable people in the field, I think that makes all the difference. Cause I mean, anybody can go down a YouTube rabbit hole and, and some of it might be good. And some of it might just be like, what in the world is that? You know, but for a lot of students, they're not, they're not to that level where they can separate the high quality stuff from the questionable. And I think that that's where people who've spent their lives and their careers building, building a knowledge of a certain field that they, they can really contribute to that. Yeah. I mean, so, you can't do a Google search without finding your website, James. So oh. <laughs> we, we could use some more discerning voices like yours if you want to make a video or two. Happy to help. Happy to help in any way I can. So 
but uh, you know, I'll... speaking of uh, adding to the literature and content creation, I want to take a second just to um, let everybody know I'll be premiering a new um, sonata by Frank Galino um, at the workshop called Reimaginings. Um, it's a like feature length 15 minute uh, work that's really beautiful it's really nice um, i did a cool. little preview of it um, earlier this week and everybody seemed to like it so um, if you're interested in that check out that performance i forget which day and time it is okay um, but the music's available um, through cimarron uh, music so oh cool i love his stuff yeah, yeah, it's really good, and this this yeah. is a beautiful, beautiful piece. But uh, no, that's awesome, and, and and good luck with that project. That's your that's your dissertation, right? Is the... uh, I am doing yeah. My research is on um, a, a bunch of his music. We're going to do a recording and some like a performer's um, analysis um, kind of guide to to playing it. So uh, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we'll have that done later this year and an album <laughs> recorded and and all that. So fantastic. Well, thanks again, guys, for joining me today, and best of luck with the Northeast Horn Workshop. Yeah, thanks, James. Thanks, James. Thanks, James.